we don't win this game without Lonnie Walker tonight, that's for sure. That was LeBron speaking after the Lakers 104-101 Game 4 victory to take a 3-1 series lead. The team trailed by double digits in the third quarter, and it looked as if they'd head back to Golden State knotted at 2. But thanks to a dominant fourth quarter from Lonnie Walker IV, that wouldn't happen. He would end up with 15 points in the final quarter, attacking Curry one-on-one, -on -one, and with the team deferring to him down the stretch. The Warriors as a team had just two more than Lonnie with 17 points in the quarter. He looked like the best player on a floor he was sharing with LeBron, Curry, and Anthony Davis. For those who may not know, Lonnie was a starter earlier this year, and the Lakers' third best player for the first couple months. But he fell out of the rotation down the stretch of the season and had to ride the bench for months. But he didn't whine or complain like we've seen from Warriors young players Jonathan Kuminga and Jordan Poole. Rather, he stayed ready and waited for his moment. He dominated in garbage time of, of a blowout Game 2 loss, contributed in Game 3, and earned the trust of Coach Ham for Game 4, who unleashed him down the stretch. He's waited for this moment, and he deserves a ton of respect. Many players couldn't do this, and he was the first Lakers bench player to score 15 plus points in the fourth quarter of a playoff game since Kobe Bryant exactly 26 years ago Monday. The Lakers have unlocked playoff Lonnie. Now let's take a deeper look into the 24-year-old's road to this moment. Before we get into the heroic performance of Lonnie Walker, if you enjoy my content and watch a few videos of mine, think about subscribing. 96% of my viewers are actually not subscribed, so if you watch it before and enjoy the content, drop a sub and comment down below. It really helps the channel. Lonnie Walker had found himself going from the Los Angeles Lakers starting five to the bench, as he missed 14 games earlier this season due to knee tendonitis, and LA overhauled its roster during the trade deadline. Whitey won't test you beyond your capabilities. Stay firm and your faith will emerge stronger than before. On Monday night, with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Steph Curry in uniform, Walker was the most productive player late in the game. Every one of his 15 points on 67% shooting was crucial in leading the Lakers to a 3-point victory to put them up 3-1 in their second round series against the Golden State Warriors. Walker started every game he was healthy for the Lakers from opening night until December 28th. That includes the Lakers 2-10 start, and also them immediately following it up with a 10-2 run to save their season. James missed the first five games of that turnaround. While he was out for the Lakers, they went 3-2, and, and Walker averaged 19 points per game on 51-44-88 shooting splits. For Walker's first half of the season, he averaged 15 points per game on 46-39-88 splits. Once Walker was healthy enough to play again, the Lakers were fighting for their postseason lives, and had just traded for Rui Hachimura. They weren't done as they would also add Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, and Mo Bamba before the, de before the trade deadline. As Darvin Ham tinkered with, with the rotation, Walker fell out of it. He has not started a single game post-injury. Walker even got leapfrogged in the rotation by one of the reserves who remained on the roster through the deadline, Troy Brown Jr. I never understood why Ham decided to go with Brown over Walker for the second half of the season and throughout most of the playoffs so far. When the Lakers signed Walker to a one-year deal in the offseason, he was an ideal fit and had proven to be one of the team's few dependable two-way players early in this season. My eyes and Walker's stats must have all been working in, con in concert to deceive me. Walker played 15 total minutes in the Lakers' six-game series victory against the Grizzlies in the first round. He caught his third DNP coach's decision of the playoffs in Game 1 of the second round against the Warriors. There was a lot of garbage time in the Lakers' Game 2 loss, but Walker played well, shooting 50% from the field in 12 minutes. He impressed Ham enough to jump up the Lakers to their sixth man in the rotation during the Lakers' Game 3, 30-point trouncing of the Warriors. Walker scored 12 points on 67% shooting. Of those 15 points that Walker scored in Game 4, every single one of them came in the fourth quarter. This is a game the Lakers could have let slip away, as the Warriors fought to travel up the Golden State Freeway, by Charter Jet of course, tied 2-2 in the series. Davis did not duplicate his first half impact in the second, and some costly turnovers put the Lakers in a spot to lose this game. 
Walker opened the fourth quarter with a three-pointer. Also, for nearly four minutes of action in the final period, his three field goals were the Lakers' only points during that span. When Curry was talking big trash after that four-point play, it was Walker who buried a 22-foot two to tie the game. As much as I hate D-level acting performances by NBA players, Draymond Green did extend his arms and Walker tried to get around him to contest a clay three. It was a clear foul that may not have been called if Walker didn't spin into the hardwood like NBA players are keen to do at the moment of contact. Also, with the game in the balance during the final 15 seconds, Walker grabbed a rebound after a Curry three-point miss. Lonnie then went on to convert his only two free throw attempts of the game to put the Lakers up by three points. He was benched in December, it is now early May, and without Walker refusing to be discouraged, the Lakers are tied 2-2 on their way back to the Bay Area. Without his heroics, they don't have a 3-1 lead. Thanks for watching. I'm Herm. Have a good one.